today's date is September 24th, and praise God that you know, uh, I wish the rapture did happen yesterday, as I all predicted, uh, but it didn't. We're all, we're all still here. Amen. Amen. Are we? Yes. Um, yeah. for, the, you know, for the last three years, from 2015, 16, and 17, there's been prophets out there saying the rapture is going to happen. September 23rd. Yeah. Back to 1988. Back to 88. Okay. Before then. Yeah. yeah. Uh, September 23rd is a is a popular day for those prophets. Lots of shine. Yeah. yeah. And uh, in order to be a, a false prophet, you just have to be wrong once, <laughs> and then now you're a false prophet. So God tells us not to. Uh, no man knows the, the hour of the day. So it behooves us not to sit there and try to guess. <laughs> uh, God will come in, in His time, not ours. Amen? But today's message is called the belly of the fish. When I think about the story of Jonah and how God placed him in the belly of the fish, I have often thought about the places that God has brought me in my life in order to convince me to follow Him. Uh, when it, whether it be trial or tribulation, I often consider, what is my belly of the fish? Okay? So sin is difficult to deal with, and as Christians, we should desire a godly path. But what about those times when sin has its in, in its clutches? Where does God need to bring us in order to extricate us, uh, extricate ourselves? In today's sermon, we will look at the prophet Jonah and how God dealt with him and how getting him to listen to God and what God wanted, wanted him to do. And we're going to look at how God works in our lives and to encourage us to live godly lives. Now turn to the book of Jonah. Jonah is in the Old Testament. It's in the, uh, it's in the section of the Bible of uh, the Minor Prophets. <laughs> so it's easy to pass by. It's not too many verses. Isaiah, past Jeremiah, Ezekiel, uh, Daniel, Joel, Amos. That's when you start to get into the minor prophets. And Jonah is right after Obadiah. Which is, uh, <coughs> Obadiah is one page. <laughs> so, it's easy to pass by. Micah and Obadiah. All right. In Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, it says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof, and went down into it to go to them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Stop there. Now, Jonah was a prophet of Israel. And Jonah hated the Ninevites. The Ninevites were their, their enemies. They were the, the Gentiles, and they were the, they, they had many battles with, with the Israelites. And they were a vicious people. They had perfected the art of torture tearing people's nails off and skinning them and doing all other kind of horrid things, it would be, it would be comparable to going to Mark Luther King and telling him to go to the Ku Klux Klan and cry against them so that they'll repent and be saved. Yeah. Martin Luther King was a, uh, a godly man, but he might have difficulty with that one. <laughs> or it would be like 
the looking at some of the uh, the police brutality we've put up with now um, and saying go to these people and, and preach the gospel to them, which is exactly what we should do. That's the best way to, to change an enemy and to make to bring, make them a problem. But Jonah had a little bit of different ideals, and he said, no, I'm not doing this, and he went in the opposite direction. And it said that he he fled from the presence of the Lord. <laughs> so he wasn't he wasn't he wasn't leaving and going to the temple. <laughs> he wasn't leaving and, and going to the Levite priesthood. He was getting as far away from God as he possibly could. He didn't want to hear God's voice. Now, back then, being that he was a prophet of Israel, how did God speak to them back then? And many people try to take how God talked and spoke to them, and they try to bring it into today. But it said that, now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. God spoke to him. God spoke to him and told him what he wanted him to do. Remember, Israel during that dispensation had a physical manifestation of God. That's what was promised to them. So when it says that they heard God's voice, it means they heard God's voice. He spoke to them. Okay? Now, as I said, Jonah goes in the opposite direction. He, he, he shuts his ears off to God's voice and says, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I'm going in the opposite direction. Now, how does that apply to us today? Now, God isn't speaking to us, even though people like Oral Roberts say that he woke out of his bed and saw the 300-foot Jesus at the end of his bed, and God spoke to him and told him, how much was it he had raised? Like three hundred million dollars, you know, some some crazy amount, some crazy amount of money that he said this three hundred foot Jesus spoke to him and told him he had to raise or he was going to take his life. Okay, this is where Scripture comes in important in understanding how God speaks to us and how does God speak to us? How do we hear God's voice? Different from Jonah. In Romans 10, 17, it says, So faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. This is how God speaks to us, through His Scriptures, Amen. through His complete Scriptures. Everything that we need to know, every instruction that we need for today is in Scripture. So, just as Jonah turned, shut his ears off to God's voice and went in the opposite direction. Do we do that? When we ignore Scripture? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. When we ignore Scripture, it's comparable to exactly what Jonah did, going in the opposite direction. When Scripture tells us that tongues shall cease that they shall end when the Scripture is complete. And this is how God speaks to you. When you continue in that, you're doing the exact same thing that Jonah did. You're shutting your ears off to God's Word, and you're going in the opposite direction. Amen. You're going away from God. And how many, in how many ways do we do things? When you have a prophet who says that the rapture is going to happen on the 23rd of September. And God says that prophecy shall fail. And prophecy is not for this time. That it was for the nation of Israel. Amen. You shut your ears off and you go in the opposite direction. Oh, yeah. So in Jonah 1, 4 through 5, it says, But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken, like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid, and cried every man unto his God, small man, and cast forth the waves that were in the ship into the sea, to lighten them of it. 
But Jonah was gone down into the side of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. <laughs> you know, when you know you're not in God's will, do you feel that the storms of life are maybe redirecting your steps? The troubles that come into your life, I always talk before about how God tries to get our attention when we're believers. That first he's going to try to bring you along gently with a feather. And some of us respond to the feather. We know that we're off, we're not in God's will and we come get back in his will. But some it takes a strap. And I remember when I was young with my father and my brothers, my father wasn't, uh, he, he wasn't shy about the strap. <laughs> I remember many a time when my father uh, in interrogating us trying to find out something that happened. His, his motto was, I know one of you did it, I'm going to get the one that did it, I'm going to get the other ones along with it, so sorry. <laughs> We, we, were, we were encouraged to drop dimes. <laughs> so, yeah, we learned, we learned at an early age, I love you, brother, but I'm not taking that one for you. <laughs> so we, we were taught to, to do our deeds in the darkness and not to let anybody know what you were doing. <laughs> the, natural, the natural consequence of sin Sometimes is intended to reorder our steps back towards God. You know, people people see God as uh, as the Almighty Judge, and He's inflicting inflicting punishment down upon us for our sins. When many times it's, it's self-induced misery, and, and you have to understand that if you're going to live live a sinful life, God is not mocked. And there's there's just natural consequences to the sins that we do. Uh, I always give the analogy that God's, God's path is narrow and un, planted off of God's path is like landmines in a, in, a, in a field. And when you step off of God's path, you will run into the, the, you will run into the minefield. And the longer you stay in the minefield, the more damage you're going to do. As you step on, and you, when you step and come in contact with sin, you're going to hit the explosions in life. And the more, the more you keep on just walking in that field and hitting explosions, the more damage that's going to be done. And sometimes that damage is irreversible. Yeah. It's irreversible. So, Pay attention to the feather. And if you don't pay attention to the feather and you get the strap, let the strap wake you up. Because what comes after that is the prayer. And that's when God feels that you're of no more back to, the, to your Christian walk here on earth. And he may hit you with the prayer. And that's when the permanent damage or even death comes when you're just of no more use. So Jonah was content with ignoring God's voice. So content was he that he fell right asleep. Have you ever been so deep in your sin sometime and enjoying your sin and you just saw a little bit on it and you've pushed God from your, from your mind, from your memory? That's temporary. God's always going to get your attention. And no different than those who are intent Ignoring God's words in Scripture, walking through life, asleep. You know, we 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 we, we talk to people sometimes, and my brother and I were talking to someone, and as we were talking to them and, and trying to point out Scripture to them, they continued to talk about their feelings. Yeah. How they how they feel. How you feel doesn't change God's word. God's word is eternal. Your feelings are fleeting. They change from day to day. They change depending upon the weather and the events. We should not be led by our, by our feelings. We should not allow our feelings to interpret Scripture or interpret God's, how, how God uh, interacts with us. 
So what are some examples of ignoring God's voice in Scripture? Paying attention, paying more attention to, the, to your experiences than God's Word. As we spoke about earlier, speaking in tongues. And then prophecy. False healings. As I said, if God has given you the gift of healing, or set you a table off on the side upstate, you'll be busy. You'll be busy. And, and if you had that gift, boy, you'll be able, you might be able to lead a lot of people to Christ. It's an open field there. One of the biggest things to ignoring God's, God's voice is tradition and culture. The way we've always done things. You know, the, the uh, Israelites were in captivity for 70 years in Babylon, for 400 years in Egypt, by the Assyrians. Many bad habits were picked up in those years. You know, they talk about the African Americans. We were in captivity and slavery here in the United States. That the waste parts of the pig were given to the slaves. The ham hocks, the chitlins, the, <laughs> the, uh, the pig knuckles, the feet. All these waste yes. parts were given. And that became part of our diet. And it's still to this day. <laughs> still part till this day. So how many years have we been free from slavery, but we still are beholden to these practices? Even though these practices have had an adverse effect to our health, blacks are, are more prone to high blood pressure and diabetes because of the diet that we eat. So, if something as small as what we eat has affected us over all these years, how do you think that the Israelites were affected by being in captivity for 400 years in Egypt? So many of the practices that the Egyptians did bled into the nation of Israel. And when they left, they carried these things right along with them. They actually took golden idols out with them. They took all kind of bad trinkets that came right along with them and, and became part of their culture and tradition. So these emotional stimulants cannot take the place of sound doctrine. We must, we must go to the Bible, to the scripture, to direct how we live and how we worship. We can't worship according to what was done in Egypt and say that it is honoring to, 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 to our Almighty God. It's not. So, so in, in with Jonah, and they said every to his fellow, and this is the mariners, they said, come, let us cast lots. That we, may, that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. And I skipped part of the story. What had happened when he was on the ship? The, 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 the tides and waves kick up, and they were throwing things off of the ship, trying to lighten the ship. Then they started questioning, what's going on? Somebody here must be causing this. Supernatural. Yes. So they start asking around. They talk to Jonah. They cast lots, and the lots fell on Jonah. <laughs> so... They end up tossing him off the ship. They throw him off the ship. And God had prepared a great fish. Not a whale. A great fish. And this great fish gobbled Jonah up. And I don't know how long it took, but Jonah actually died. Jonah died. And he was dead for three days in the belly of the fish. Now, here again is culture and tradition. What have we heard about the story of Jonah? We heard that he was in a whale. <laughs> he was in a whale. What did we say? Well, in order for him to survive for three days, it must have been a whale, because a whale is a mammal. A whale breathes in air, so Jonah would have had air, so he could have lived. 
that sounds all good. That sounds like it makes sense. But here's the problem. I was uh, speaking back and forth with a, a Muslim gentleman for a long time, a month and a month and a half, until I finally put a stop to it. <laughs> every 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 day around dinner time, this guy would call would uh, hit my phone up uh, messenger. We'd go back and forth for hours, for hours, and uh, he had uh, he had sent me a YouTube of a Muslim scholar who uh, basically said that Jesus Christ didn't die on the cross, and he was going to prove it. And he went to the Book of Matthew, where it's, uh, Jesus Christ said, like Jonah, he would be three days in the belly of the of the fish, but not in the King James, but in one of the other versions, and changed that word to whale. And the Muslim scholar said, see, Jesus, Jonah was alive in the fish. Thus so was Jesus Christ. He was alive too. And this is what happens when you don't follow Scripture exactly. When you allow culture and tradition to creep in and change the Word of God. And I, I looked at that and I was like, and I'd always heard that Jonah had died and it was in a whale. And that, that he wasn't dead, that he was alive. That's what was taught. So I went back and I looked it up myself. And it said that Jonah knew corruption. Corruption in the Bible is death. It is death. So Jonah was dead. Before he died, he prayed out to God, he called out to God. But he died. And God took him in the fish, redirected him, fish spit him out onto the beach <laughs> and God resuscitated him. Just as, he, just as he brought Lazarus back to life. He brought Jonah back to life. Fortunately, when we go to our belly of the fish, we don't always die. <laughs> you know, we don't always die. God gives us opportunity. So, and through a series of events, uh, we can see how uh, God brings us to different places in our lives. So let's take a quick look at some of those areas. So I ask you, what is your belly of the fish? Where does God allow your sin to bring you to direct you back to His will? Is it depression? Outside of the will of God, there is no peace. You will chase happiness and peace around you. But outside of the will of God, you will not find it. But in the will of God, and when you're serving God, you will have great peace throughout all situations. I had, uh, over the last two weeks, where I was sick in the hospital for four days, where my brother died, where my daughter was on an island that got wiped out by a category by a and I hadn't heard from her in three days. Last time I heard from the, the storm had burst her windows and she called me in tears and was asking me what to do. But God gave me great peace. Everybody and their sister was calling me asking me how if I heard from my daughter, everybody at work coming into my office, you heard from your daughter, you heard from your daughter, you heard from your daughter. And I appreciate their concern, but you know, I just left it in God's hands to God, whatever your, whatever thy will is. I know she, my daughter, has um, truly dedicated her life to serving God. And uh, I get worried. God gave me peace about it. And praise God, she got a sat phone and climbed up on the top of the building and told her know she was okay. So, your belly of the fish might be depression because you're not following God's will. If you're going to look to this world for satisfaction and happiness, you're going to be disappointed. It, it, won't, it won't deliver to you. Could it be anxiety? Some people have anxiety attacks over nothing. Just it comes upon them. Again, peace is only in Christ. That is where you will find peace, that's where you will find serenity. That's where you will find purpose. That's where you will find victory over your battles, over your sin nature. 
in Christ. Is it alcoholism? Alcoholism or drug addiction? Is that where you, is that where the belly is? God need to bring you there to bring you down to bare minimum to nothing to where you will take your eyes and lift your eyes up. Is it jail? Some people have to go to jail to hear God's voice, to seek His voice. Is it loss of possessions? Do you have to be stripped of everything that you have before you understand God and eternity is where your treasure is? That here is fleeting and it will rust and it will have no value. Whatever my brother Bobby had is gone. It is of no value. But what he built over the last two years, studying God's Word, following God's Word, is eternal. It's gold. It's precious jewels. And he's going he's gonna to be rewarded in the judgment seat of Christ for it. He's going to reign with Christ. He, he is a conqueror. He is a victor. Victory in Jesus is the song we sing. Or is it illness? Does God make you, are you so ill that, that the only answer for you is God? The only answer is God. So Jonah prays for deliverance and then goes and fulfills the will of, fulfills the will of God. We need to start listening to God's voice in Scripture. We need to rightly divide it. We need to, we need to not just graze over it. We need to pull it apart. We need to study it. We need to hear what God has to say to each and every one of us. That is what it means to have a personal relationship with our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Close us up in prayer, man. Father God, we are humble before you this morning. We thank you for the word of God right behind it this morning. We thank you for every opportunity to glorify and magnify your holy name. Continue to speak to us, we pray, Father God. Continue to guide us and guide us. Lord, our ears are open to you, Lord. Our eyes are open to see hearts all the way to you speak to us and guide us in the direction. We just call upon your holy name this morning. Which you would guide us.